Hey, how's it going? And today I just wanted to show you one of the things that I like about Lightwave and that is how fast it is, how fast it is and easy it is to get a good render out of it and get something, start with nothing and have something that looks pretty darn good in like about three minutes. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to show you how I do this. Okay. I've done videos on this before, but one thing that's good about Lightwave is how fast it is to import Mixamo characters. So you come to in out, you go to the interchange. I already have the Mixamo standing idle right there. You just click that button. It comes right in. And it's so interesting to me how you can start with literally nothing, this, you know, this 3D world and end up with something that looks pretty darn cool, pretty fast. I wish I could say I learned this overnight, but it's taken me a little while to figure all this out. Okay, so that's the Mixamo character. So what we're gonna do, go through this real fast. We're gonna put this at zero, and that's him in uh, standing in idle position. I could actually do an animation of him just doing that, but I'm just gonna render out a single frame. Okay, so what we do then is we're just gonna go into the surface editor here, we're going to click hold control and click that. We're going to set this to principal BSDF. Then for the, what we call the joints, we'll just double click here and we're just going to make those black like that. And that's good enough. That looks good enough for the joints. For the body itself, one thing I'm fond of doing is I love this checkerboard that they have in Lightwave and I'm fond of just changing the colors that they have here. So, so like I make the this one white and I'll make this one red just like that and then I'll scale it everything down let's go 0.5 tab 0.5 tab I think that does it and then of course we can't see anything so let me just match my camera perspective here and then I'll go to VPR oh let's see here camera view I must have done something wrong Let's see, uh, here on the body. Oh, I didn't hook it up. That would explain it. Yeah, we'll just, let's say I wanted even more than that. Let's see, I'll do 0.5 there. Yeah, we can even do 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.25. So you can keep scaling this to get things more and more however you want it. I actually like that better, 0.5, sorry about that. So I'll do 0.5, 0.5, 0 0.5, okay? And then that's that. Now what we can do is go ahead and add a ground plane, that's easy enough to do. We go into geometry and we'll just add a ground plane like that. And there it is. And it's the same thing, we can go back into the surface editor, click here, and we can just add the checkerboard to the floor too. And I'll just change this to white. It makes it look more interesting and just pop that in. And then we have our floor. Now for the backdrop, you can make the backdrop, make it the, look really interesting, really fast is if we click on this, let me go into perspective just real fast for a second here. Let me zoom in. And then if you tilt up, you can see the horizon there. Okay, so what I'll do is I'm going to make this black and then we just punch up the sky squeeze here and you'll see what it does when we bring it up. It looks, I think it looks really, it's a really great effect. You got to bring it way up though. It just creates a really nice backdrop then. And then we do the same thing here on the ground. We're going to make that black and the same thing on the ground squeeze is just bring it really up. So it really... What it really does is create a gradient between these two colors and these two colors. So it just, it just looks cool. And already, you know, we started with literally nothing. And then I don't know in about four minutes, we've got something that looks pretty cool. I mean, it's just cool. You can use these for all different, have so many applications. It's not even funny. So the only question then is rendering, because you might notice like it looks spotty. So there's different things you can try to get this right, but this is uh, some quick settings you can do. So you can go into camera. It all comes down to sampling. So there's always this trade-off between samples and rendering time. So you try to find the sweet spot. But here you can do like eight and 20 for your camera samples. And that should be good there. And you'll notice an improvement every time. You can go into render, render properties, render here. 
and then you might want to bump up diffuse bounce, uh, bounces to three. And these you can do a six, a six there, six there, six there. You can come down here to the noise filter. If it accepts your GPU, you can go on GPU, but you can also do it on CPU. And you can do that. And then under global illumination, you're going to have to bump up these rays. And I'd say you could put it at six. You can enable the secondary and then also put that at six. And if we go to render frame, oh, let me, let me match this here. Make sure I'm matched camera. Go to settings there. And then if I go to render frame, I don't know how long this is going to take, but I don't think it's going to take terribly long, but you'll see it'll come out with a real, I think a pretty clean render. I don't see anything that really is bothersome. I don't see a lot of aliasing. If you look at the squares, they're really clean. And the Mixmo rig looks very clean too. So you saw how we started basically with nothing. And according to my watch, it took about seven minutes to go basically go from nothing to something that looks, I think, pretty photorealistic and pretty cool. So just one of the things that I enjoy about Lightwave. So I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.